At the outset, I am thankful to Dr. Dharmendra, Dr. Bansi Sakusara for a kind invitation. And it's an uh, absolute privilege uh, and honor to be a part of this uh, uh, unique uh, PSG meeting. Uh, much has been talked about the physiological aspects of substance uh, and diabetes since last uh, two days, I would like to say, as we are uh, probably at the end of conference now. Immune dysfunction in gestures of diabetes. Why we need to talk? Because we all know that I like to be key. May be key, I wish I may say just in that address. Okay. So we all know that pregnancy is in a inflammatory condition a low grade inflammation sets in and inflammation at the level of placenta and that secretes a uh, counter regulatory hormones and that really drives the insulin secretions from the beta cell of mother and this is a usual process and today morning uh, dr v has told that it's a uh, uh, fetal maternal axis actually okay it's a fetal insulin secretion also plays a vital role for maintaining the normal glycemia and in between this immune dysregulation is very critical unfortunately we do not have a large data set we we still have to investigate uh, to conclude the theory and why we need to conclude the theory to reach uh, 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 reach uh, at that level because if we reach that level then we can target those areas with the novel therapies and that's the uh, uh, idea of dr rundul and dr shalini for putting this uh, topic uh, in this conference these are the agenda uh, i will highlight uh, introduction GDM and immune dysfunction, hyperglycemia and immune dysfunction, dysfunctional immune response in GDM, immune modulating therapeutic options for gestures and diabetes, and I will conclude the story. So aberrant hormone expression from the placenta to maternal metabolic dysfunction that I already highlighted, and that really leads to diminished insulin functionality. Upregulation of circulatory inflammatory factors linked to innate immunity and that drives the uh, immune dysregulation. And ultimately, we know that this chronic uh, subgrade inflammation or low grade inflammation that really sets the endothelial dysfunction and the all the vasculopathy that we talk about. Uh, uh, we, we talk whenever we talk about the type 2 diabetes and macrovascular disease also. In patients with type 2 diabetes, immune cell infiltration of a visceral endless tissues that could be a pathological disruption of insulin signaling and that contributes to insulin resistance. And at the site of placenta, GDM placenta shows villous immaturity, villous fibrinoid necrosis, Korean juices, increased angiogenesis with increased overall size. These are the difficult words um, of uh, uh, immunology and it, it was really hard for me to understand all the things. And hyperglycemia and GDM is associated with the increased placental inflammation where excessive glucose can stimulate NOD, LR, iron domain containing protein 3, inflammation activation in trophoblast, inducing generation of the point here is the generation of interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 18 inflammatory cytokines. Um, um, this is a snapshot of uh, immune system, innate immune responses by neutrophils, NK and NKD cells, monocyte, macrophage, dendritic cell, and platelets. Adapt the immune system by T cell and B cell. Hyperglycemia and immune dysfunctions. Uh, so this is an overview of uh, immune cell phenotype in maternal circulation 
adipose tissue and the placental tissue. These are the three areas where this immune dysregulation happens. And normally, in every pregnancy, it's a normal immune response. And when you are here today, it's a low grade inflammation. That's the same thing. Because sperm is not from the mother, actually, okay, not from the woman, okay. So the sperm is the antigen here, and that sets the inflammatory cascade. But this is a normal immune response. Uh, that continue the pregnancy and that uh, uh, deliver uh, that continue the pregnancy for X time one. Increase in neutrophil, NK cell count, monocyte count, TH2 and Trag response, beta cell lymphocytopenia, and reduction in the platelet count. And we all have observed that whenever we see a reports of a CBC, we tend to see a much lower side compared to normally what we see a platelet count. Uh, uh, whenever we see a uh, pregnant woman uh, uh, CBC report. Regulated macrophage infiltration, healthy glucose metabolism, inflammatory response in early pregnancy, regulatory phase in later pregnancy, M2 response increase and DAG response increase. In a nutshell, all this response will be highly augmented or you can say dysregulated at, in the GDM pathophysiology. The most important point here to understand for all of us is that whenever we see a CBC report in the first trimester or in the early pregnancy, one month, two months, the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio is a good predictor for a future gestational diabetes or hyperglycemia in the pregnancy. So we need to look neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. That means this neutrophilia which is a normal response in GDM pathophysiology, it is altered. The placental extravenous layer of GDM in type 2 diabetes woman contain an increased number of cytotoxic CD16, CD15D, NK cell related to mild gestational hyperglycemia. Look, all these uh, 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 particularly innate immune response uh, uh, component which I have highlighted I have been studied. But for many uh, component, we require further study. But neutrophil, neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio is a good marker, I would like to say. It's a good predictor for the gestational of diabetes. Hofmer cells, again, these cells are of fetal origin and their role in pregnancy is not fully understood. CDM and CD116. Um, has been some research into molecular links between macrophage activity and GDM pathophysiology. Again, this is the most important. Predominantly in a state of poor activation in overactivation in women with a gestures of diabetes. Like that happened in the dengue fever actually. Okay, it's an actually overactivation. But the destruction is happening continuously. That's why we see a low platelets. So multiple studies have examined circulating platelet activity in gestational diabetes pregnancy and found that platelet count, platelet to lymphocyte ratio and mean platelet volume, a measure of platelet function and a marker of activation potential are significantly higher in GDM pregnancies. And again, this is a really good marker, very cheap marker and very easily available. We were talking and we are uh, talking our gynecologist friend that uh, uh, please come to our meeting actually, okay. And what first investigation they advise? Do you know when they see a pregnant woman? CBC. CBC and group. These are the two investigations they always, 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 always advise. Always advise. And from that report also, you can tell the gynecologist that please do a blood sugar level or even a pregnant lady who come to you, you can tell them, okay. This is a simple thing and it is easily available. All the gynecologists have to do CBC, have to do CBC, okay. So, which we can identify very easily from their reports only. Tract and gestational diabetes. This reduced circulating tract count was noted as early as in the fourth trimester in women with gestational diabetes, where diminished number of tract cells correlated with elevated interleukin 6 and TNF alpha concentrations. 
Um, Rutul is here and I, I would like to thank you. Sorry for interruption of the talk. Rutul is always giving me an, a, a different topic and a very niche topic and a new topic to me. Last year, he gave me a biomarkers in gestational diabetes and this time, uh, immune dysregulation uh, in gestational diabetes. Thank you very much, Rutul, for giving me a new topic every time. <laughs> Uh, in circulation, uh, these are the immune cell populations, uh, neutrophils, NK cells, NKT cells, monocyte and dendritic cells. Um, and these, they, they all have a different functional role and implication in gestational and diabetes. Receptor tissue also, neutrophils, residual NK cells and macrophages, and at the level of adipose tissue, and that's why we are talking about the um, uh, obesity in a younger woman. These macrophages have a lot of role to play at the adipose tissue that leads to lipid and energy metabolism, adipocyte mitochondrial function and implication that increase the infiltration and increase the activation. Immune modulating therapeutic options in GDM approved and exploratory. Approved are the insulin one. Mat metformin, I think so, uh, I am putting a raised on, uh, on my mind after Dr. Vishesh's lecture and metformin can be given in our setup, okay, as and when required, okay. Glyburide, of course, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, wide area has shown by this man, okay, so I may be confident whenever I require, okay, thank you very much, this man. So, these are the approved therapeutic options and it all have um, definite uh, these are the all approved targets for immune dysregulation and we know how uh, insulin therapy is an anti-inflammatory one. These are the exploratory options and that we, I, I was talking that if we find out this immune dysregulation pathophysiological link for a gestational diabetes, then we can uh, uh, find out newer ways to uh, help those patients. And monoclonal antibodies, and, uh, Three inhibitors, mitochondrial antioxidants, and all have a um, definite uh, um, role in terms of uh, mm, reducing the low grade inflammation, which has to be low grade in a normal pregnancy, but it is dysregulated in a gestational diabetes, and where we can hope for this uh, new exploratory options uh, which we will have in future. In conclusion, uh, the maternal immune cell adaptation is a key to low-grade inflammation and poor maternal health outcomes associated with gestational diabetes. Both component innate and adaptive immune system respond to hyperglycemia and insulin resistance condition with excessive tissue infiltration and increased cellular activation resulting in the release of pressure of inflammatory markers throughout the maternal system. Uncertainty remains concerning specific immune cell population in gestational diabetes pathology, such as how circulating levels of NKD cells and DCR influence, the extent of macrophage infiltration and polarization in placental tissue, and the identify and role of additional immune population in mediating adipose tissue inflammation and metabolic dysfunction. But still, we require a lot of investigation. Extended investigation is required for to deal with these complex immunological pathways which are involved in gestational diabetes and certainly which will help uh, to find out more ways for this pathophysiological aspects. It will really provide the window of opportunity to improve future maternal health outcomes by developing clinically effective targeted therapies. Thank you.